Polydine chromosomes or giant chromosomes are unusually large chromosomes formed as a result of repeated rounds of DNA replication without cell division. The sister chromatids produced thus stay fused together. This type of repeated division of the chromosome in the absence of cytoplasmic division is called endomitosis. Polydine chromosomes at interface contain two types of bands, the dark bands and the lightly stained inner bands. The dark bands contain more DNA and less RNA. The inner bands contain more RNA and less DNA. The banding pattern is distinctive for each chromosome in any given species. Individual bands are sometimes called chromomeres. Certain chromomeres or bands become enlarged at certain times to form swellings called puffs. These puffs result from localized uncoiling of individual chromomere in a band during genetic activity which open out to form many loops. The puffs indicate the site of active genes where mRNA synthesis takes place. The chromomeres of puffs give out a series of many lateral loops which appear as rings and are called Balbiani rings and are the site of active transcription. Polydine chromosomes are found in various tissues such as the salivary gland, rectal and malpighian excretory tubules in the larvae of some flies, as well as in several species of protozoans and plants. In this experiment, we're going to prepare temporary stained slides of polydine chromosomes isolated from the salivary glands of the larval stage of Chironomus insect, also known as the blood worms. For this experiment, we'll need acetocarmine or acetoorsin stain, immersion oil, tweezers, pins, droppers, glass slides and cover slip, magnifying lens or a simple dissecting microscope, some blotting papers, a compound light microscope, and Chironomus larvae collected fresh. First off, the larvae of the Chironomus fly are collected from their natural habitat, which includes basically any stagnant pool of water with a medium to high level of decomposition. Droppers are used to collect the larvae as shown here. Chironomus larvae are about a centimeter long, can be seen wriggling in the water and are easily identified by their blood red coloration, which is due to the presence of hemoglobin in their blood. An individual larva is placed on a glass slide in a drop of water. Aided by a magnifying lens or a dissecting microscope, locate and distinguish the bulbous head part from the pointed end of the tail. Using a pin or a tweezer, hold the larva in position in the middle. Using a second pin or tweezer, gently pull the head away from the thorax. With a little practice and patience, you will be able to pull off the head along with the gut and the pair of salivary glands which are situated just beneath the head. The salivary glands are whitish, semi-transparent and roughly oval structures about a millimeter or so in length and contain several cells. Isolate the salivary glands from the rest of the gut and the head. Add a few drops of acetocarmine or acetoorsin stain. Gently lower a cover slip onto the slide. Tap the cover slip with the blunt end of a forcep a few times. Blot out excess stain from the edges of the cover slip. The slide is now ready for microscopic observation. Scan the slide under 10x for salivary gland cells. Locate the polytene chromosomes within the salivary gland cells and observe under high power. The images that follow are microphotographs taken of the slides prepared in this experiment.